Hey friends and welcome, this is Dr. Heather and welcome to Ask Dr. Heather. First of all, cheers, 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 big cheers to everyone who completed our 40 day clean eating challenge. I am going through the, the algorithms or the logarithms and seeing who actually is the top three people who have checked in each and every day. So it lets me go back and do that. So I'm figuring that out. I did not spend yesterday doing it as it was Easter. Today was Monday, Monday, Monday. So thank you for joining. I'm joining you live from Overland Park, Kansas from my home office here in my home. Let me know where you're joining, um, where you're joining from. I am super nervous today. I'm actually even a little bit blushed. Generally, I'm not nervous. So today is a topic I've gotten actually quite a few questions about and my good friend Anita made a post on Instagram and I've gotten more questions about that. So I know I talk about that I had an amputation a year ago. I just had my ampuversary. Ampuversary means the anniversary of your amputation so I had an aka which is above knee amputation due to a very rare neurological disease that was onset after my skiing accident in 2014 so I was in a wheelchair for five years so there's a couple things that can happen while you're in a wheelchair you can either sit there and eat everything that you can roll and put on your lap and that people bring you because when things happen maybe you've had a surgery maybe you've had a death in the family maybe you've had something tragic happen or something great happen like you You've had a baby and neighbors bring foods and casseroles and baked goods or you can choose to say you know what I got to watch everything that I eat I've got to be super super stringent because I'm not really burning any calories especially when you're in your wheelchair you're not doing 15,000 steps as the average that is it bare average bare minimum that many people do so and I knew what I could do for my health and so not only for weight management but also for my neurological health I was implementing fasting back the very first moment that I found out well, actually within 10 days of falling I went right into a ketogenic diet back in 2014 so before keto was a top search word before prove it came out with pure therapeutic exogenous ketones before slim fast or south beach or any of the other companies started using the word keto i was doing a ketogenic diet back in 2014 i had trouble staying in ketosis or having my body make ketones i had trouble finding good quality mct oil for my body to make ketones so way back then but i'm going to get down to the hot topic that my friend anita talked about so i not only asked my body to make ketones i want to facilitate it making ketones i Try to give it products and foods like avocados we had tacos tonight so we did an omed which is one meal every day I'd probably do a 24-hour fast at least one time a week but let's get talking about amputation so an arm amputation they generally don't have to watch about gaining weight or if you're below knee amputation so I'm just gonna show you my prosthesis because I've had a lot of people asking about that so what happens when you get fitted for a prosthesis so I hope this shows out hey Josh thanks uh, for joining me we try to get Mitchell home for Easter but it did not happen so hopefully you guys can see this I know the commenting is in the way so my prosthesis goes right up to my hip it's right up here in my hip so you can see it goes right around my leg so what can happen a lot of times is if you gain just a couple of pounds or a couple kilograms so hopefully you guys can see that I think I've had videos of me walking I'm trying to fall in this short period of time but what can happen is you know what some people gain weight in their tummy some people gain weight in their bums and you can see that as a prosthetic socket it goes all the way around that's the only way it stays on your leg so I'll just show you a little picture of my knee down and then I'll sit down so not only after being in a wheelchair for five years it's hard to manage your weight but you can always buy your bigger size skirt when you have a socket they actually cast your body like when you break your arm or break your leg then they make a silicone mold that you just saw for my leg you really don't have any room to gain weight or lose weight. It really is what it is. So if you actually gain four or five pounds or six pounds, there's a certain point where if you gain weight, you cannot get your residual limb in that socket. It's the real truth. Or if you have a lymphedema issue, if you gain, again, any fluid at all down in there, it can happen with traveling, with flying. If you have, you know, you have too much processed sodium, not real salt, but too much sodium, you can have a real problem gaining, gaining a little bit of weight. So five pounds, maybe nothing for someone who's my height if that's where you gain it which is right in your thigh so um, so I know I'm nervous I'm sorry about that but I wanted to share the real truth about that so some of the tools and tr um, the true I told you I'm nervous 
the tools, and I don't like to talk about myself, the tools and strategies that I use have been to be on a ketogenic diet, to do a one time a week, a 24 hour fast. Not only because I have a neurological syndrome or neurological disease, because we know what ketones do is they calm down the nervous system, they increase GABA and increase dopamine, which that what we need to do is to calm down the nervous system, calm down the pain receptors, so I sleep much better. So one time a week I do a 24 hour fast. Hey Heather, thanks for joining, hey Jill, Hey Joe. So what we know is that when you're when the ketones are ketones are high in your body, the nervous systems calm down. GABA and dopamine, which are your feel good hormones, help you actually feel better. Your moods are better. You also have less cravings, which are huge. You know when you actually have the sugar blues. So when it takes the cravings away, you feel better. So if you're not snacking and you're not having cravings, you're less likely to overeat. You're less likely to have those nighttime munchies. Your cortisol is much better balanced at night. We know there's lots of studies when you Google ketones and inflammation, especially with some with CRSP or RSD or any type of inflammatory neurological disease, you can gain just fluid inflammation weight from pain or from lack of sleep. We know through science that ketones or beta hydroxybutyrate inhibits NLRP3 inflammasome. I'll publish that study down below and also helps decrease intra, some of the interleukins. Those are big sciencey words, but those are things that cause inflammation or trap inflammation in between the cells or interstitial fluid. But when you have a prosthetic on, if you just jumped on, I just showed you my prosthesis goes clear up to my hip, that if you gain any weight at all, some people, if you're a short person, you know, someone who's 5'1 or 5'2, five, 5 pounds, if you gain it in your thighs, you can't get your leg on for a few days. It may sit in the corner and you can look at it. So you have to be super careful. There's no more five or 10 pound yo-yoing. So for some people ask me about that, well, what happens if you gain weight? Well, you can't put your leg on because you can actually get very, very, you can get sores if you push your leg in there when it doesn't fit because um, you're just cramming it in. Like I've told people, it's like Cinderella cramming your shoe in something that's too small. So the way that I've been able to do that is now that I'm actually up and moving, not in a wheelchair, I can actually move much more, but that was also a sweet thing. I went from being in a wheelchair for five years. Now I'm up and walking. I'm moving more. I was going to this warm water pool. I was going to hot yoga. So then I was burning more calories. I was able to increase my calories. Some of my carb I went from 20 carbs, about 28 carb balance, which is where I was for my ketone level. Well, now my hot yoga studio is closed and now my, um, my can't get to warm water pool. I can still do yoga at home, but now I'm not burning as many calories as I was doing hot yoga, even doing cold yoga at home. But now I'm hopefully able to get out in the yard. But all I'm saying is that you have to watch that. I've used intermittent fasting and that's the great thing. So even if you're not in ketosis, but you use those intermittent fasting rules we talked about yesterday, which means it's almost more important when you eat them, what you eat. So if you're actually in a short order window, eating super healthy whole foods, not processed foods and things like that. Your body has to try to sift out to sort out. But when you use very high quality MCT oil, my body can make more ketones. Ketones inhibit inflammation, which will help pull the toxins and water out of fat cells. One time a week, I do a 24 hour fast, which is lunch to lunch. You guys can all do that. Make sure you check with your doc your doctors. And then one time a month, I do an extended fast. That will be anywhere from 60 to 72 hours. Um, last week, last month ended up being 81 hours. And I just do that whenever my body feels hungry. I know I'm not thirsty, I'm not dizzy, I'm not like headed, but my body says, you know, you just really need to have some protein or some greens right now. I listen to my body. Sometimes that's 55 hours, sometimes it is, you know, not like a magic bell that ding 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 goes off but it's when my body says you need to have some food right now and I usually follow Dr. Jason Fung's work which is under 300 calories on a fasting day under 20 grams of protein so when I use prove it's reboot kit it meets those it meets those so I'm getting some protein because you definitely don't want to be protein deficient especially in this high stress world that we're in because in the olden days I used to just do a straight fast so I do a water only fast or water and some bone broth the problem if you're buying bone and broth sometimes it's too high in protein and protein stimulates insulin so then you're not actually protecting yourself if you have too much insulin or too much protein then you're not actually stopping myel myelostatin which actually protects your lean muscle mass so you can still break down lean muscle mass 
if you're not careful. It's why you want to have a lower protein count. That's why Pruvi did a great job with their better broth, infusing it with ketones and a little bit of potassium, a little bit of magnesium, and again, some amino acids in there to really balance it out. But I just want to talk about that because I talked for many years prior to my accident that when I was in my 50s, I want to be fabulously fit. I want to make sure that I can go water skiing and snow skiing and bike riding and hiking with my kids. And then when I become a grandma, when I get older, I want to make sure that I can participate at my very highest level. Level. Maybe that's taking my grandkids snow skiing when I'm 70 or 80. I want to water ski in my cabin up north of Minnesota. So those are always my health goals. It was never about wearing, people say, never about wearing a bikini or things like that. But I want to be able to scuba dive and, and all that kind of fun stuff. I wanted to play at a really high level. That's what I guess I should get to. And then life happens. I had a big uh, a big snow skiing accident or minor snow skiing accident. It set up a very big neurological disease. But having an amputation last year and 10 days ago, 11 days ago, has really freed up my body once I got rid of my um, dysfunctional limb. That's what I call it. But it is still a really big strategy maintaining weight. And as a female, and I think there's mostly females on here. I don't want to leave somebody out here, Joe. Sorry about that. I know you're on here and Josh, you as well, is that those are the things that I've done. I don't let my weight get out of control. I don't let my cravings get out of control. It would have been really easy yesterday. It was Easter. I really wanted my older son home for many reasons. I would have loved to. Sorry. It was hard being Easter, not having your kiddos home. My older son had had septic shock when he was a freshman in high school, and we almost lost him. But he came home and was able to go to Easter Mass. And then last year when I had my amputation, when I got home, I got home the day from being out in Colorado for a month. And I went to attend Easter Mass with my family. It was just a very big holiday. It was my birthday as well, which is not the big holiday, but just we're Easter people. So anyway, I wanted to have him home. He wasn't there. So stress can take your body out of ketosis. I could have eaten my whole German chocolate birthday cake. I could have gone to Halo ice cream, which is still unopened that my husband bought me for my birthday. He made a keto cheesecake, which I didn't have a bite of, but I enjoyed the beautiful steak. I probably ate six ounces instead of four. I ate the lovely Brussels sprouts that were made. So you can still have an amazing time. But what I really wanted to say is it's really easy to let your weight run away because you can say, well, what the heck, right? You can say, what the heck every day? Well, what the heck it's left over? What the heck? The steak was expensive. What the heck? The Brussels sprouts. And we went to a lot of work to make that. My son made tacos tonight and we had fresh, well, he made guacamole and like a what the heck, I'll have the whole thing. However, you know, what the heck adds up down the road and then you don't have options. It's a little bit different when you just can't get your jeans buckled up. It's a whole different deal when you're thinking, you know what, I got to get my leg into a prosthetic. And so when you're talking about if you're a female and you gain weight in your thighs and you know, you can cover this up a little bit, but you can't stuff your leg into your prosthesis <laughs> when you have a leg. If you're a below the knee amputee, I think you'll have a little bit more flexibility when that comes. So my strategies are always making sure that I get plenty of water each and every day because if I'm if I'm not thirsty, then I don't confuse thirst for hunger. I do use my ketones each and every day. I made jello bites for me and my mom. So I, if I think I'm a little hungry, hangry, I have a little jello bite with my ketones and I'm happy to share that recipe with you before. I do things like I use the highest quality MCT oil because my body can take this and make more ketones out of it. So if I have a stressful day, like yesterday, just missing my son and some of the other things, missing not being able to go to church and missing that my kids are older and there's no dying of the eggs, my body can make ketones out of this. Yes, you can make it out of the avocados, but specifically C8 and C10, my body loves to make ketones out of that. Or my body loves to make ketones. I love my coffee. So my body can make ketones out of the MCT and out of the coconut powder out of this. My body can make additional ketones out of that. So when I know that I'm thinking I have a little bit of a craving, I can use that. And once I get the ketones in my body, my oxygen levels higher, my ADP is higher, my energy levels higher, my cognition is higher, my, uh, my cravings go down, and my GABA and dopamine, which are my feel-good hormones, are actually higher and better. So I'm not eating out of hunger. I'm not eating out of depression. I'm not eating out of sugar blues and everything starts to come together. So it puts your body at that homeostasis level. So I don't know what your goals are. I'd love for you to share your goals. Mine were always to be functionally fit at 50. So I'm really working on that hard. I've got a few years to catch up. I've got six years because I was in a wheelchair for five years from 2014 until last year. And now I've been an amputee for a year and I've definitely been working hard um, on trying to get functionally fit, working on getting up and down the stairs and things like that. I'm able to wear my leg about an hour or so a day. I'm really needing to have my prosthesis refitted. Um, but with the uh, virus going around, my, my appointment is delayed. I'm just sharing a lot with you because people say I don't talk about it enough. 
but um, I'm gonna answer a few questions here so I'd love if you guys have some questions to answer those but I wanted to share that with you because somebody did ask a couple other people in amputee group said how do you manage your weight because it's a real thing for women around your cycle time you can gain some weight even if the scale doesn't move but just feeling bloated um, so sometimes it's some hidden food allergies sometimes it's some hormone issues as you age sometimes maybe you're increasingly muscle mass but your residual limb or the amputee limb actually continues to shrink so mine I'm on my third socket which is the upper right hand part so it's kind of your knee to your thigh area that's called the socket that's what holds it onto your body that will continue to shrink over the next few years so hopefully I'm taking you guys along this journey hey Mindy nice to see you and Carrie nice to see you too um, hopefully it will continue to shrink and I do appreciate you guys asking questions because I don't know I'm learning along with you guys as well and so I joined a couple of great amazing groups that I found um, here on Facebook with our some seasoned amputees that are really helping guide a lot of us who are brand Brand new on our journey who are not able to be with our physical therapist or occupational therapist and who are not able to have our prosthesis actually adjusted and you definitely don't want to wear it if it's not fitting right um, some people explain it like a retainer so if you had a retainer in your mouth and you lost a tooth or something shifted or you got hit in the mouth you don't want to wear a retainer that doesn't fit well it's the same kind of thing for your socket you can't always tell if it's fitting right or not because your body's always shifting or shrinking however when it comes to weight those are my strategies eat as clean as I can identify each eat when I'm hungry, stop when I'm full, make sure that I'm well hydrated each and every day. I do a one day a fast a week, 24 hour fast. I always try to eat in an eight hour window. My birthday halo ice cream is still in the refrigerator. Haven't opened it yet. Probably going to wait until I can get outside. It was not, it's not very nice right now. So I can't get outside and do a lot of steps. Soon as soon as it is, I'm going to earn my halo ice cream. You betcha. And I'll show you a picture because <laughs> I got to earn it. So, um, and then again, I'm getting ready to do my 60 hour, probably a little bit more reboot. The reason I do that, the first 24 hours for female, you increase your human growth hormone, which is your anti-aging. You also ditch all that glucose and glycogen, which is toxic for your body. So when people do fast, you actually anti-age on that. So stay with me guys. I see some people dropping off. I know you got things to do tonight, but why do people fast? It's what our bodies were designed to do. That's what our ancestors have been doing. There was not refrigeration. There was not drive through. There wasn't like, we have a refrigerator upstairs. We we have a refrigerator downstairs. We had a deep freeze that we sold as kiddos started moving out. We have a deep freeze outside in our garage. We don't need all that. The nice thing is we do have a refrigerator that we were able to buy some local meats and have in the freezer at this time, which has been kind of nice. However, with that being said, once you start getting a little bit more keto adapted, eating more healthy fats, you're gonna find that smaller quantities are more dense in foods. You need less quantities, but you need more greens, four to six cups a day of eating healthy greens. Those are like Brillo pads. Those are the trace minerals. That's where your body can grab the electrolytes from. And then you need healthy, I mean, healthy proteins because we have a essential amino acids. We have 21 different amino acids we need to get that are the basic building blocks to our body. And we have essential fatty acids. We don't have any essential carbohydrates. I'm sorry to say that, but there's no essential carbohydrates. I've yet to find someone who's carbohydrate deficient, but know that it's okay to have some because you're gonna have carbohydrates in nuts and seeds. You're gonna have carbohydrates in greens that you eat. So to eat 28 grams, 30 grams of carbohydrates, like I probably had that. I had onions and a red bell pepper and I had uh, greens on my taco salad tonight. Avocados are actually a fruit. So in my guacamole, I had some carbs in that. Onions, believe it or not, have like, they're one of the higher category of um, sugary carbs, especially when you caramelize those. So those those were like all my carbs for the whole day and just my taco salad tonight plus I had shrimp and had some steak on there so just be mindful that you are being nourished you're eating a nice decadent meal with that but just try it try moving up and identifying eat when you're hungry don't eat because it's 8 o'clock and we told you that do that in the 1980s or 1990s and don't have a snack before you go to bed because you're afraid your blood sugar is going to drop because what really what's happening is is that you're eating some sugary stuff that lasts 30 minutes and you're like, I'm hungry all day. That's because carbohydrates only last 30 minutes and hunger goes away in 20 minutes. I have another family, a, a friend of mine is doing the fast with me and she's like, well, we're hungry. I'm like, that goes away in 20 minutes. Just burn that glucose or glycogen. Either do some jumping jacks, some plyo jacks, just do a running man in your chair or jump up and down for like five or six minutes or go brush your teeth. Just get rid of it and your body will actually shuttle that out and you'll be gone in 15 or 20 minutes. So if you'd like to know more about fasting, how to even do a 24 hour fast, which is called OMED, one meal every day. I wouldn't recommend doing it every day 
day. I would not recommend fasting on one meal every single day. No, I'm not recommending that. One time a week to kind of reset your body. It helps re-shrink your stomach back, especially if you overate yesterday. You ate to extra full, not just ate to full, because your stomach will expand out. That's how we see people get to five and 600 pounds. People can eat a whole loaf of peanut butter and jelly, people to eat a whole pint of ice cream, eat a whole pizza. How does that happen when your stomach's supposed to be the size of your fist? Because they keep overeating and overeating and overeating and overeating. Well, if you give it that time to shrink, just tell yourself you're preparing for some dental work or colonoscopy or your refrigerator went out, but just tell yourself, I'm gonna wait tomorrow. I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna have you know, 16 to 20 ounces of water, and I'm just gonna wait until I'm hungry. And now I'm hungry, I'm gonna have something like some eggs and greens. If I'm a vegetarian, I'm gonna have like a hemp and porridge pudding or a chia pudding. Um, I said hemp, somebody said, what'd you say? A hemp pudding or a chia seed pudding. Yes, I do drink my ketones during that fasting state because it helps my body says, oh, you're burning ketones for fuel. It's getting more oxygen to my brain. It's getting more ATP to my brain. So I do use the ketones during that time. It's been the best tool I've ever used it makes my brain feel like it's sharp and going it gets oxygen to your optic nerve um, I see my pupils dilating because of the trying to read these so when you do your 24-hour fast you drink your keto OS and that during that time I absolutely do I actually make jello bites so I take one package of my ketones I take two cups of boiling water I add my gelatin to it and then I kind of let it to get to room temperature you don't want to use ketones when they're boiling and then I put my ketones in there or you can also just do more of a fat fast so you could also just do no food in your omed and you could just do a little bit of 143 so you could do this whole container really because this is actually six servings so you could do a teaspoon in the morning and teaspoon in the night because your body will turn this into ketones it's kind of like priming the pump oftentimes our body forgot how to make ketones it just wants to slip back into sugar burning and so it's really easy to get your body just moving forward with that so it's a nice those are nice little tools and great nutrition to give your body and for me I've biohacked enough which means I've just tested my blood but before prove it came out with ketones if you join me late I had a hard time staying in ketosis in 2013 2014 my ketone level was hard to get it above one I'd fast for 48 hours but I wasn't sleeping good I had a lot of pain I still had some injuries left over from my fall mentally I was not in a good place I was depressed because I wasn't driving they weren't sure what was going on because I was having ticks and tremors and my leg was not healing first they said oh you won't be running for nine months and I was like oh my gosh that's so long oh you can't go to the gym for six months or for six weeks I'm like, how do you not go to the gym for six weeks? Like, that's that's crazy. I got to go like every day or at least five times a day. <laughs> and I'm like trying to look at my patients like, how do you not go to the gym or exercise or things like that? Well, once I quickly got over that and picked myself back up off the floor, I thought this is a great thing. I'll teach my patients how you can, you know, use your arms, use your waist or so many other things you can do to exercise. And then the then I got the diagnosis of the rare disease and all this kind of stuff. As I move forward, because that's always what my motto is, be unstoppable, have faith in whatever God's plan is, and keep moving forward, even if it's only like half an inch a day or it's one fourth of an inch, and you may have a little setback. The setbacks are just mean you need to learn that lesson again and then move forward again. So that's happened to me a few times, and you just keep moving forward. So hopefully I've brought some value to your day and explained a little bit why I talk a little bit more about weight management. It's about fat management because what happens with women, and a lot of women have yo-yoed. If that's been you, you can raise your hand if you want to. If not, it's happened to all of us. We just kind of get carried away. We've been to college. We've you know had marriages or we you know maybe you pre snack while you're preparing for your wedding or the big day or maybe you were pregnant and you over it when you're pregnant or maybe over it when you're breastfeeding there's so many reasons you can always get carried away and overeat things like that anyway long story short when you lose fat the fat cells shrink and then what happens with women when you put weight back on you make another layer and then you lose fat again and it shrinks and then you put another layer of fat back on and then it shrinks every time it shrinks that's called cellulose that's why you get the ripply and dimply effect from that and that whoosh thing happens with men it seems like their fat cells kind of shrink and dissipate and disappear with women we just keep layering it back on but tonight I'm off target again sorry about that I really just want to share some tips with you of why for me 
it's really important because if I even gain three to five pounds, I probably don't have a chance that I'm five foot ten-ish, maybe I should say five foot ten and a half or five foot eleven. Over fifty something now, Scott, it's true, it's true, it's true. Um and so <laughs> Carrie knows that too. Anyway, they're my high school friends. Anyway, but that is a true story because my friend posted that if you gain weight and you're a above knee amputee or a three joint amputee in your leg. You really have to be careful about gaining weight because if you gain weight in your thighs, you can't get your, your prosthesis on. It's got to be a beautiful Cinderella fit. If it's too big, it falls off when you walk because um, it's a suction fit or lanyard fit or it's a screw fit. And a screw fit may be a little bit different where they actually put it, the hardware into the bone and you just screw the joint on. I don't have that one. I have the lanyard or the socket fit. But again, if you lose too much weight, the same thing happens and it falls off. Well, you can put another sock on it, put some padding on, you can get away with that. But if you gain too much weight, you can't cram it in there. You can cause a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure on the bone. You can damage some tissue in there. So anyway, those are the tools and tricks that I do. Thank you guys for asking those questions and thank you for forcing me to be uncomfortable talking about this. Um, and that's all I can say is because uh, I had a lot of people saying, you need to talk about that. So, hey, Dusty, thanks for joining me. So, anyway, if you guys, some of my high school friends are on here, we're still planning on our high school reunion. Check out the page. We have the whole weekend plan, and we're thinking forward with that. So, this is, again, Dr. Heather from Overland Park, Kansas, Cardin Center for Wellness here at Ask Dr. Heather. Thank you again for joining me. If you guys are on our 10-day keto kickstart, we are on day four, and you guys are crushing it. So, if you want to know more about our 10-day keto kickstart, please feel free to reach out with me and join me. Today is all about exercise and getting moving. So we did post some other things later today. Um, actually, yesterday was day four. Today's day five. Dr. Jamie did day five. So anyway, congrats. We're halfway through. It's actually day five. So I had a little brain bubble there. I probably need to drink some more water because I'm nervous talking about this. So anyway, you guys have a great day. If there's something, a very hot topic you want to talk about, please let me know. I want to help, help you better understand what's happening in the health and wellness world, whether it's about nutrition, whether it's about cooking, whether it's about being a mother of four or being a brand new German Shepherd mom. Mom, well, she's not brand new. We've had her for many months now, but I'm still figuring out some of the dog stuff, uh, believe it or not. But you guys have a great day. Thanks for hanging with me, and we'll see you later. And as always, this is meant to be shared. It's meant to be educational. I got uncomfortable out of my comfort zone sharing what weight gain can do in a prosthesis that is above knee. Um, so anyway, you guys have a great day. We'll see you soon.